Hi guys, it's Sarah from Book Nerds and Fangirls, and today I will be giving you my February book haul. I accumulated 23 books in the month of February, and I didn't read any of them. Most of them I got today, so don't worry about that. Six of them I got two weeks ago as a Valentine's Day gift to myself since my boyfriend's in Florida, so I didn't really get to celebrate Valentine's Day, but I got six books for myself, and then I got my first paycheck. So, I got a lot of books, but I also got my tax refund, so I had money to pay bills and whatnot. So, I'm super excited to show all these 23 books, books, and a lot of them I wouldn't have read if it wasn't for BookTube, so yay BookTube. Okay, so the first one I have here is Stolen by Lucy Christopher, yeah, Lucy Christopher, uh, it's gone honor book award from the American Library Association so I decided to start reading more award-winning books books and from what I heard about this one it involves a kidnapping and I believe there is Stockholm syndrome in here which I didn't really know existed until someone pointed out that it happens in Beauty and the Beast, you fall in love with your kidnapper, and I wanted to branch out on mental illnesses and contemporaries, so I picked up this one, because I haven't read a book about Stockholm Syndrome and falling in love with your kidnapper, so I'm excited for this one. This one, I just really want to see the point of view of a person with Stockholm Syndrome, and I hope it really does well. The next one is an award-winning book that's being turned into a movie, movie that I'm excited for because I've never read a thing by this author, and yet I got two books by him, by him this um, month. Actually, a lot of the books are from new authors, so I'm proud of myself for branching out with authors. But the next book I have here is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, and it's inspired by an idea from Saban Todd? Da Dawad? I don't know how to say her name right. It's got two awards. It's another award-winning classic. I'm not 100% sure what A Monster Calls is about. Like, exactly. I know there's monster involved, and I know there are beautiful illustrations in this book. This book, and it's a really short read, so I think I'm gonna read this one first, because it's gonna be a shorter read, and it reminds me of a book that I would read in, that they would make us read in high school. High school, because it's got awards. It's small, so a lot of people who don't like reading could read, and it's a mat from what I heard, it's a really great book, so I'm excited to read it. So, that's my second book, and I'm sorry if this book haul is going to be long. Long, I didn't really intend to get so many books, but I did. So, the third one is Shame on Me, because I watched the movie before I knew it was a book book, and this one is My Sister's Keeper by Jodi Picoult. Picoult. It's one of her earlier novels. If you don't really, if you remember the name, but you don't remember My Sister's Keeper, she also writes, writes, uh, what was that one? Ah, uh, I can't remember what it was. It's one of the recent ones. Ones where she pulls a prince from the book. Uh, if anyone remembers the title, drop it down below. I'm sorry about that. But My Sister's Keeper, I watched the movie. Movie. I loved the movie. And then I realized I have never read this book. This book. And if you haven't seen the movie or read the book and you don't know what it's about, My Sister's Keeper centers around two sisters. One has cancer, one doesn't. The one that doesn't have cancer was genetically made to save her sister's life. Life. So what happens is that she finally gets tired 
of her parents taking st her stuff about permission. So she files to be illegal legally emancipa emancipated from her parents, so she has rights to her own body, and it's a very powerful movie, and I heard the book ending is completely different, and it's sadder, and I can't wait to find out what happens. But, you know, it's just, ah, why, it's just, the rights to a person's body, body, even though it's from your pa your parents, It's just, you know, I don't understand why people would have a child just to save your other child. Yes, I know you love your children, but that's not fair to the other child. So, my sister's keeper, and I'm excited to read this one. The next one is just a cover lust. Lust for me. I don't really know what it's about, but I saw this gorgeous cover, and I really hope this is the first book and not the second one. Okay, it's the first one. Okay, thank God. So, the this one I have here is A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. Not really sure what it's about. It's got scientific theories, brilliant parents. Huh, interesting. Oh, so it's a murder mystery. Okay. So I think this is a murder mystery from what I could tell on the back. And the cover is just so visually beautiful. And with me, cover lust is a big thing for me. So I love this cover when I saw it. And I just wanted to get it. So The fifth book, a lot of people are going to be like, Whoa, Sarah, you haven't read that series yet. And I would like to say I'm sorry. I'm not really into science fiction as much as I claim I am. And, but this book has been all over, and a lot of these bo books that came in one package kind of pissed me off because they're waterlogged for some weird reason. I mean, they're supposed to be brand new books, and I guess it was raining in a city that they were delivering it to or something. Because look at that, just look at, look at how frumpy it is. And the book that, one of the books they messed up, because there's two of them in here that they messed up, and it's Crest by Marissa Meyer. This is fairy tale retellings, this series, and this one centers around Cinderella, aka Cinder. And uh, I'm going in blind about this series. I've heard a lot of good things about this series. A lot of people seem to love it, even if they're not into science fiction. I'm totally into the fairy tale retelling. Telling, so I picked up this book, and hopefully, you know, it meets up to the expectations and the hype because they're on a glass for me. You know, that was another book that was hyped up, and I hated it so much. I'm not going to bash you if you like it. That's fine. I can see why people like it. I just didn't. And Cinder, I hope, is not like Throne of Glass, and I hope I actually enjoy it. So there. Okay, the next book I have here is one that I'm super excited about, and that's Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodden. I am hoping that I'm saying that name right, and this book is about, what, is about an alternative reality, I believe, is what, it is where the Axis powers won World War II, and there is a competition, more, a motorcycle race, to be more specific, and a girl enters this motorcycle race to win the grand prize, which is a chance to meet Hitler, so she could kill Hitler, and anything that involves killing Hitler, and killing Hitler had me sold from day one. I wanted to read more loosely based not loosely based historical fiction, because Hitler was a real person, but more imaginative fiction, historical fiction. So, yay, let's kill Hitler. Oh, well, he's actually still dead, but 
you get my meaning. So this book, I don't really know what it's about. I know it's a Snow White retelling, so I had to pick it up. Pick it up, and that is The Shadow Queen by C.J. Redwine. And I love, I'm on this fairy tale historical retelling thing lately, apparently. So I picked up The Shadow Queen, and this is a rewrite of Snow White, and I think it centers around the Queen. I think if you saw Snow White and the Huntsman, I think it's kind of like that. It's a retelling, so I'm guessing it's more like that. So I'm excited for this one a lot. The next one is a book that's popular on booktube again, and that's The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson, and this one centers around, let me see her name, oh, they actually don't, oh, Laia, this one centers around Laia, she's a princess who is in an arranged marriage, one day she decides to escape, and they send two men after her, one is the prince, and one is an assassin trying to kill her, and apparently you don't know which one is which in this story, which I'm intrigued by. It's got princesses, it's got mystery, and yes, cliche, love triangles probably, but we'll see what happens in this one. So pumped. Now, this one I'm actually really, really, really pumped up for. I hate that it's kind of waterlogged, but not really. And that is The School for Good and Evil by some Mon Chin. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the name. Uh, if anyone knows the pronunciation of this name, could you link it in the doobly doo below? But, uh, School for Good and Evil centers around two friends. One thinks she's gonna be in the school for evil, one thinks she's gonna be in the school for good, but apparently they do switcheroo. The good one gets sent to the school of evil, and the evil one gets sent to the school for good. So I'm thinking there's a little mystery there, and just from that synopsis, I'm just like, ooh, mismatch. Personalities in different schools, sign me up. So I can't wait to read this. It looks like I picked it up thinking it was going to be a graphic novel, but apparently it's not, which is okay. I don't have to have everything in my life be a graphic novel. Novel. Maybe I'll pick up Death Note because I loved the TV show Death Note. So hopefully I love the manga more if I buy the manga and hopefully I love the school for good and evil. So next up is You by Caroline Kep. Kimnet? Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm butchering all his names. And You tells a perspective from a stalker's point of view. View as he's stalking this girl. And I really wanted to know what it's like in criminals' minds, like stalkers' minds. So, I picked up this book because I think it would be intriguing to read, and I'm in a writing slump, and a reading slump, so I'm hoping to get out of those two, and just start, you know, getting back to myself again. Okay, this one is another one from an author I've never heard of. Well, I've heard of her. God knows I've heard of her, but I haven't read her yet, and that is Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. From what I heard about this book, I think it's about two roommates, a boy and a girl, and exploring their relationship as more than just friends. Friends, so I'm guessing there's some friends with benefits action going on in this one because it's new adults. And the synopsis intrigued me, so I picked it up, and I can't wait to read this one. Another one that I picked up that I have no clue what it's about, but Emma Watson is playing the lead in this one, and it's another book to movie, and I've heard good things about it, and that is The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. Royalty. So I think it's about royalty. 
Yeah, it's got a princess in this one. A princess. Oh, okay, so it's about princesses turning into queen, I believe. Don't kill me, but, you know, can't wait to read this one because I want to read books to movies so bad. This, now this one, this one got utterly waterlogged, and I hope I could still read it. If not, I'm gonna go to Amazon and say, hey, my book was damaged. Can you send me another one? And that is A Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Ness, from what I could tell about it, I think it's a murder mystery, and Patrick Ness gets blurbed a lot for being a good writer, so I'm excited for that, and this book is making me mad, because look how ruined it is from being waterlogged, and this is the first complaint I've ever had about Amazon. Amazon is usually good at getting my books in perfect condition, and this one's waterlogged and gross, and I hope that the page is dry, because I'm not going to read a damaged book. Book. I'll try to read the damaged book, but, you know, I shouldn't have to if I spent that much money on it. The next book that I have here is A Murder Complex by Lindsay Cummings. Uh, this one, I don't really know what it's about. I know that it's a book where the deaf rate is higher than the birth rate, and there's not a lot of people still here, and it sounds intriguing, and thankfully this is in the box that wasn't waterlogged, which really pisses me off, because most of my boxes were in the wet one. Most of my books were in the wet box, so I'm not happy, but, you know, well, at least not all of them got damaged, so I can't complain. Next book I have here is Prisoners of Night and Fog by Anne Blankman. And for this one, it's another... It's not a retelling, but it's in the perspective of a girl who is Hitler's niece. Niece, she adores her uncle. She doesn't really know what's going on with her uncle. She doesn't know that her uncle is this really evil person person because, you know, he's Hitler, so of course he's evil. So he, she just adores her uncle, and she doesn't think anything's wrong with her uncle until she meets a Jewish reporter who fills her in about what her uncle is doing, doing, and it sounded intriguing, so I picked it up, and I hope it's good. So the next book here is actually a cheat since it's two books, and it seems a little wet to you. So again, Amazon, not happy. But this one is two books in one, and that is What Goes Around by Courtney Summers, and it includes Cracked Up to Be and Some Girls Are. Cracked Up to Be is, I believe, about a girl with depression. Depression, who comes back to school after trying to commit suicide. And that's all I know about... Cracked up to be. Technically, I just got this book because I really, really, really wanted a new book. Because I've already read Some Girls Are. Are. And I loved Some Girls Are. So I wanted a book that had two stories. I never read Cracked Up to Be, but I didn't want to waste my money by rebuying Some Girls Are. So I bought this. And Cracked Up to Be is about that, and Some Girls Are, if you haven't read Some Girls Are, it centers around a girl named Regina, she's in the popular crowd, she goes to this party one night, her best friend's boyfriend tries to rape her, rape her at this party, and after that she tells another one of her friends in confidence, and then after that, everything starts to spiral out of control. She's frozen out of the poplar group, and it's just a really, really, really vicious story about bullying, bullying, and whenever, I think it's the first book about bullying that actually truly made me sick, because yes, 
13 Reasons Why also dealt with bullying, but not as bad as what happens to in Some Girls Are, and it really opened my eyes to how bad bullying could really be. Be and I just adore this book. Adore it. So the next one is circling around book two, but I never really thought I would get it because I'm not a fan of the subject matter that is being presented in this book. This book, but from what I've read about reviews, there is not one bad thing being said about this book. This book. And call, pay me intrigued because I'm really intrigued about why the hell this book is popular pertaining to the subject matter of the book. And, you know, I guess I've, this book, I'm going to tell you right now, it deals with in, incest. I watched Game of Thrones and I watched Flowers in the Attic. I'm really grossed out by Flowers in the Attic. Don't know why I wasn't really grossed out. I was still grossed out in Game of Thrones. Let me tell you that. But at least there are some bearable parts of Game of Thrones. I just skipped the incest parts. Parts and moved along. But this one, I really wanted to read because I really wanted to know what's going on in people's minds and what puts people in that type of situation to begin with. And the book I'm talking about is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzama. Zama, this one deals with incest. Incest, from what I heard, is about a brother and a sister who are put into really bad circumstances because of their alcoholic mother and basically forced into the parenting rule, rule of the house where they basically pretend like they're parents rather than brother and sister. So it deals with that, and it deals with them falling in love with each other, and I'm not really big on incest. I don't know why people like it. Like, I could deal with it somewhat. It's just, ew, it's gross, it's ta it's really taboo. But I applaud this offer for coming up with an idea that not many people would actually like to write about write about. I'm pretty sure there are people who have written about it, but this book is loved by so many, and I really just wanted to pick it up and find out what's the hype. So, that's that book. Next book I have here is Glass Swords by Victoria Aveyard. This, I can't really say much about this. This is the second book in the Red Queen series, so I'm just gonna put this down right now, and I'm so excited to read Glass Swords. So sad. So the next book I have here is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, which is from the perspective of two friends. You have a witch that is a thread witch that sees the ties that bind people. And of course you have a truth witch, which I don't know what a truth witch actually does. I know what a thread witch does, but I think a truth witch is basically... Where you could tell, c catch people on lies and other stuff, and you can't lie to a truth witch. So I'm excited. And then it's got a blood witch. Which, which, I don't know what a blood witch is, but I read the first chapter, and he seems pretty cool. So I'm excited to read truth witch. So this one, I really thought it was gonna be a King Arthur retelling, but I think it's more of a... Let's fight for this empire thing, and that is Legacy of Kings by Eleanor Herman, and this girl is a historian, so I can't wait to read this book. Yay. So this one, I read the first chapter. I've read the first chapter in all these last books, from Glass Swords to the last one, but I read the first chapter, and this one is really diverse so far, and I love how the girl in this book... This book reminds me of a real-life teenager, because I had problems when I was a teenager, too. So, she's just so real, and the book I'm talking about is The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. The Girl of Fire and Thorns follows Eliza. Eliza, she's forced into an arranged marriage. 
marriage. She has problems, like most girls do, and I'm excited to read this one a lot. This one, the first chapter had me intrigued also, and that is Sword and Verse by Kathy McMillan. Millen, this girl, she is a slave. I believe, yeah, okay. This girl is a slave, and they do not know that she could read and write. Right, and that makes her deadly, apparently, and I'm just excited to read this one, and look at the gorgeous cover, I just couldn't resist. And finally, the last book, the last book that I'm excited for is Assassin's Heart by Sarah Ayers. Ayers, this one takes place, this one is about six I believe it's six families of assassins. There are two people, a boy and a girl. They're from separate families, families of assassins, but they're in a forbidden love story. Until one night, her family ends up dead, and the only person she believes that did it was her boyfriend's family family, and it's just, who did it? It's a who did it story. It's got assassins. It's got a Romeo and Juliet vibe. What more could I ask? And there you guys have it. That was my enormous book haul. I'm sorry about keeping you all busy. Not my intention, but I can't wait to read all these books if the knife never letting go actually lets me read it, and it's not waterlogged to hell. Hell, and I will be complaining to Amazon about this. I'll write a complaint saying, hey, uh, you need to package your things better because my books got, not all my books got destroyed, thank God, but the top ones have a lot of waterlogging and it bugs me, but we'll just have to deal with it. And there you guys have it. I hope you enjoyed this book haul, and I will see you in another video soon. Bye!